Amazon quietly discloses a security incident, USPS finally fixes a vulnerability they knew about a year ago, and Rowhammer is back with a vengeance. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for November 27, 2018, your summary of the threats to your security, privacy, and internet freedom. I've got a big surprise gift for our Moon Bagel, Hush Puppy, and Olympus Fire patrons over on Patreon. I'm going to be sending out a surprise care package to anyone in those three pledge levels who contributes $50 or higher over the course of their pledge on Patreon. Now you must be an active patron and include your shipping info and your t-shirt size because you're going to get that limited edition ThreatWire t-shirt by the end of the month. And then I will ship out the package whenever you hit $50 lifetime support. Now this is limited edition, so check out the Patreon link in the show notes below for all the information and in case you have any questions. And a big special thanks to our newest Patreon supporters, including Leonard, Ronald, Richard, and Bruce. Now I would love to see us hit our next goal for ThreatWire by the end of this year, so if you've been considering supporting the show, now's a great time and you might even get a special gift. So now, on to the news. Now on Wednesday of last week, Amazon sent certain customers an email explaining that their names and email addresses may have been exposed in a security incident. The email was quite simple, with no details about who it was exposed to, how long it was exposed, or if this was due to a security breach. The company advised that users should not need to change their password or take any action since this was due to a technical error. And the email ended with a very suspicious looking signature that simplified HTTPS down to HTTP, and it had colon slash slash Amazon.com, and the A was capitalized, as Brian Krebs pointed out. So no HTTPS and a capital A in the link, which looked very suspicious. And while that email looks like a fake, according to spokespeople, it is legitimate. Now the issue was fixed before the email was sent out and a rep stated that the incident was not a breach. Unfortunately though, Amazon seems to be very quiet on the subject, avoiding the usual questions from InfoSec reporters, like how long was it happening for, or how many people were actually affected, or what type of technical error was this? Amazon may have been silent upon further questioning due to the timing. This happened right before Black Friday and Cyber Monday. But their silence may have larger repercussions than a few sales. The email sent out notifying affected users was not enough to cover the new privacy regulations laid out by the GDPR in Europe. And yes, Europeans were affected. How long should it take a company to fix a security issue after a researcher has disclosed it to them? Well, in the case of USPS, it took them over a year to fix a pretty serious problem, and it was only fixed after Krebs on security owner Brian Krebs contacted them this month. The issue was on the USPS.com website, and it would allow anyone with an account to view the account details for any of the other 60 million registered users on the site. They could even modify the user's account if they wanted to. Now the problem occurred because the USPS has this service called informed visibility, usually used to keep businesses in the loop regarding their bulk mail marketing or campaigns so that they can see real-time tracking data. An authentication weakness within Informed Delivery's API would allow any logged in user to query for any other user's information, be it their name, address, email, phone number, user ID, and a lot more. Even scarier, all a user would need to do this query is know how to use wildcards with the API feature search parameters, which can be viewed and modified via a browser. Now, Nicholas Weaver, a researcher over at UC Berkeley, told Krebs that the API never asked for verification from the user before giving them access to the information. A very simple verification set in place could have kept this issue from happening. Now, according to USPS, there is no proof that this was actually used ever in the wild maliciously, but this could have created consequences for businesses that use USPS for informed visibility, but also for targets of scam artists and fishers or stalkers. This isn't the first issue that USPS has had in recent months either. Their informed delivery consumer feature was being used by identity thieves to steal mail, and a report back in October of 2018 issued by the Office of Inspector General found authentication issues in informed visibility not related to this incident. So while this problem was fixed, let's bring it back to my original question. How long should it take for a company to fix an issue after being informed of one? 
This one took well over a year, not until a notable journalist and security researcher reported the issue did they actually do something about it. If that is indeed true, that a security researcher responsibly disclosed the problem and it was ignored a year ago, then their handling of responsibly disclosed vulnerabilities should be a very top concern. Rowhammer is back! And it's a lot worse than we thought. Researchers from a university in Amsterdam, and I'm not even going to try to say the name of that university because I don't know how to say that, they published a paper on Thanksgiving Day that explained how the Rohammer attack has expanded to now include a much larger scope than originally. This time protected memory is also vulnerable. Now Rohammer is the name used for a whole series of exploits that work the same way. DRAM, the memory cells, could leak and interact electrically with other DRAM modules, and this could leak or change the contents of the memory. Rohammer attacks have been used in tandem with privilege escalation exploits, and they gained notoriety back in 2014. Back around that time, researchers were able to alter data on memory to cause data corruption or manipulation. Now, since 2014, Rohammer attacks have been expanded to include DDR3 and DDR4, and it could be used to attack Windows PCs via Microsoft Edge, Linux VMs, Android phones, and a lot more. The 2018 report is called ECC Ploit. It's named after error correcting code, which is used as a control mechanism for high end memory. ECC protects against bit flipping, which happens whenever Rohammer attacks occur, but also when neutrons, alpha particles, and cosmic rays, of all things, react with a memory module. In theory, ECC should protect against Rohammer bit flipping, but the researchers found that memory with ECC would only detect one bit flip at a time. Now, if two occurred at the same time, it would crash the app. If three occurred at the same time, then ECC memory protections did not even see the bit flip, so it was completely ignored. They were able to bypass the protections put in place. The attack doesn't require physical access either, as all the researchers needed was an unprivileged remote shell. Now, while Rohammer has not been used in the wild, in theory, it could be in targeted attacks. This specific issue, which is ECC Plate again, takes between 32 minutes to a week to execute, so it's not necessarily that useful, but it is theoretical. The researchers do not recommend that manufacturers stop using ECC protections because they are still protections, as this would be very, very rare and hard to reproduce. Like I mentioned previously, I want to hit that next goal on Patreon to do a monthly live Q&A just for all patrons. So if you are interested in getting access to that along with a slew of other extras and even potentially on one of the highest perk levels, if you want to get that free care package that I su just surprisingly decided to send out, uh, then click the little link in the show notes and become a supporter because it all helps and it shows me that you appreciate the work that I'm putting in for this show. And also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sending in these brand new fur baby photos. I love them. These are really cute. Keep them coming. Thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button. Share this episode on your favorite social media page. Let's get some new people in here watching the show. I'm Shannon Morse, and I'll see you on the internet.